As technologists, scatter radiation is something we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. In order to learn how to manage scatter, let's talk about factors that influence scatter. X-rays in the primary beam can do one of three things. First, the X-ray could have no interaction with the patient and pass through unchanged. This is called transmission. The second way X-rays can interact with the patient is by being completely absorbed by the patient. The last way X-rays can interact with the patient is by interacting with the patient and releasing an x-ray in a direction different than its original path. This is called scatter radiation. The ratio of transmission, absorption, and scatter radiation is dependent on patient thickness, density, and energy of the x-ray. Both transmission and absorption are diagnostically important. However, scatter is the single largest factor responsible for poor image quality. As a radiographer, we want to reduce the amount of scatter radiation that reaches our image receptor. Let's understand what increases scatter radiation reaching our image receptor. First, increased patient thickness and density increases the amount of scatter radiation that will be produced thus increasing the amount of scatter that will reach our image receptor. An exposure of a three centimeter thick extremity will cause about 45% of the x-rays exiting the patient to be scatter radiation. An exposure of a 30 centimeter thick extremity will cause about 100% of the x-rays exiting the patient to be scatter radiation. Also, various types of tissue, including bone, fat, and muscle, plus pathology, affect the production of scatter radiation. Second, increased field size or open collimation increases the amount of scatter radiation that will reach our image receptor. When we tighten the collimation, we decrease the amount of x-rays that will reach the patient thus immediately reducing the amount of scatter radiation that will be produced. If there are no x-rays interacting with the patient, then there is no scatter. Finally, increasing KVP increases the amount of scatter produced, thus increasing the amount of scatter that will reach our image receptor. The mechanism of this is rather counterintuitive, so follow me on this one. The two most common methods x-rays interact with matter are through the photoelectric effect and Compton scatter. In the photoelectric effect, an x-ray is completely absorbed into the atom. With Compton scatter, the incident x-ray is absorbed into an electron and a new x-ray is deflected in another direction. If an incident x-ray is deflected, we call the new deflection scatter. While the photoelectric effect happens more often at lower KV ranges, Compton scattering happens more often at higher KV ranges. Remember, photoelectric effect provides diagnostically useful information, while Compton scattering does not provide any diagnostically relevant information. What's crazy is that as we increase KVP, the chance an X-ray will have a photoelectric or Compton interaction decreases. However, they don't decrease at the same rate. Photoelectric effect interactions are much rarer at higher KV ranges. So even though the total number of photoelectric or Compton interactions is lower at higher KV ranges, more of these interactions will be Compton, which will produce scatter. Let's do a demonstration. First, we'll look at low KVP range. Here we have 100 squares, 75 are yellow and 25 are red. The yellow will represent a photoelectric interaction and the red will represent a Compton interaction. Here we're getting a ton of interactions but the majority are photoelectric, which provides diagnostically relevant information. We're getting some scatter radiation from Compton interactions, but not too much. Now, let's see what happens when we raise the KVP. Notice how the overall number of interactions goes down, but those that do interact have a greater chance of being Compton. And now that there are more Compton interactions, there is more scatter being produced. And remember, mass does not produce scatter.